I'm Matt Elia, the assistant manager right here at the Mansfield Airport. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Aviation Adventures, which we're filming from the Remax Hot Air Balloon at the 2013 Mansfield Airport Fly-In. I'd like to welcome Chris, the pilot of the balloon. Yeah, hi, Also Matt. joining us is Ryan, a student pilot from Bridgewater State College, working on advanced training now. Today we have this unique opportunity to be here for the flying event. We have planes, we have the Mansfield women of today doing a touch of truck event. It's a great day down here at the airport. I wanted to capture this opportunity because Chris here is a balloon pilot. I have thousands of hours of flight time in fixed wing airplanes, but I've never been in a balloon. And even though I think we're still on the ground technically, this is definitely different. So Chris, thank you for joining us. No, we're thrilled to be here, Matt. Uh, Remax the wants to always be involved in community type affairs such as this. So we try to bring the balloon to events just like this. Excellent. So I want to ask a couple of questions about what Remax does with the balloon. But first, how long have you been a balloon pilot? Let's see, we started at seven. No, I'm joking, of course. Um, actually, I took my first ride in 1977. Wow. Um, went to work for that balloon company in 78 and had my own ticket in 1979. And that's when I started full-time ballooning. So it's about 34 years. Do you do any flying other than balloons or strictly balloon flying? I don't trust those newfangled contraptions. <laughs> That's how we look at them. I'm kidding, of course. I do not, though. No, okay. I do not, to answer your question. Well, maybe someday we'll have to go up in a fixed wing airplane. Oh, I've been up many times, but oh, I'd okay. love to go up with you, yeah. Great. So, for the Remax balloon, uh, one of the realtors, Carol Ann Paul Mary, was giving me some information. She was the, the organizer who got you guys out here today. And she said that Remax does a lot of things with the balloon. Uh, for education and, and children with local schools. True. Do you do a lot of those things? We do. In fact, uh, we did two this, this uh, past week. We, what we like to do is go to a school and inflate the balloon in the schoolyard, maybe take the principal and some of the teachers up for a brief tethered ride, and then um, can't take the, the children because there's just way too many and the liability comes into question. And then what we do once we deflate the balloon, we like to go into the classrooms and do a little 10 to 15 minute meet the pilot question and answer period. And believe me, the questions are fantastic. Excellent. So what is your favorite experience from being a balloon pilot? What was your most interesting flight? You know, people ask that. I, I tell you, there, every single flight is totally different. Um, I guess some of my favorite places to fly would be Queechee, Vermont, and the Shawnee flying through the uh, Delaware Water Gap and the Shawnee from the Shawnee Inn okay. up in the Pocono Mountains. Um, those are some of my favorite places. And even my own backyard in Woodbury, Connecticut, a very pretty New Englandish countryside. So, very pretty area to fly. Cool. You can put some more air in? All right. So, uh, with the balloons and when you when you take people up for the first time, what's that first ride usually like for people? How do they how do they usually respond to that? Well, you know, everybody's apprehensive. Somehow, I I was very comfortable with my very first flight. It, there were two things. It's it's a very simple principle. Okay. And that is, the hot air rises, and if you trap a large enough volume, we get the kind of lift that we have here. And number two, it's a very simple application of that principle. You put, bring a fan in, hold the throat of the envelope, what we, we call the envelope, uh, open and fill it full of cold air to a point where you're able to aim the burners in to add heat to the air that's trapped in there. So I thought it was a, a it was the most, even more natural than a plane. I mean, I understand how a plane works, but I always thought balloons were, was even a simpler uh, method, you know, hot air rises. We've learned that when we were little kids, we, we quickly pick, pick up on that principle. And I think that makes perfect sense too, even more so than when you look at the wing and people say, well, how does that really stay up That's there? Because right. right. with this, you can see the mass of air. Yeah. With the airplane, you simply have the wing and it's zipping through. So yeah. it is a little different. So my other question is, and I can feel us getting pushed around by the wind a little bit. Yeah. What's that like when you take off and it's just the wind dictating where you go? How do you, do you have any control over where you go? I mean, with the airplane, we correct for crosswinds and we're able to set a course and, and fly to points. How does that work with a hot air balloon? Well, actually, it's, a, it's pretty interesting because although technically you cannot steer a balloon, um, if we could see the different directions wind blows at, it's fascinating because we could take off here and head 
down and down the runway in this direction and if 200 300 feet it might go off to the left maybe 20 30 degrees and at 500 feet it could be back over in this direction and at 2000 it could be coming back entirely if the winds are lofter in that way in fact there's places that are very popular in ballooning they have what they call a box you can like albuquerque yeah um, you can take off in town at two, three hundred feet, fly across town, go up to five thousand, and come back and and just work the box. Well, that's pretty cool. Because of the topography of the land, yeah, it's it's a really special thing. But most flights you want to figure out. Out of two thousand some flights, I've come back to the same spot I took off from maybe two or three times. Interesting. Usually that's because the weather's changing in an unfavorable manner, so you want to end your <laughs> flight right about then. Because it's pretty unusual to come back. All right, great. Well, Chris, thank you very much for My joining pleasure, us. My pleasure, Matt. My and pleasure. And I think that this was a great episode. I've always been fascinated by hot air balloons. So thank you. And thanks again to Remax for bringing the balloon down, letting us have it here with our fly-in. I hope you guys get some uh, good donations, and I hope some people get to enjoy the uh, the balloon. I hope so, too. Thanks for having us, Matt. We, we love the, the aviation item, so period. Excellent, excellent. We're always, uh, always for pushing aviation forward. I thought this would be unique. Welcome back to the 2013 Mansfield Airport Flying and Touch a Truck event. Now mm -hmm. we're over in our snow removal equipment building here on the airport. I'm joined by Mass DOT. I'm welcoming Steve Rodding to our Aviation Adventure Show. So Steve, thank you for coming on. Nice and, to be uh, here, Matt. Thank you for having us. We, we always love to come to the airport open houses and fly-ins. Thank you. Great. So Steve, uh, what do you do for Mass DOT? At the Mass DOT, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a part of the uh, Aviation Planning and Programming programming department where we participate with all the 36 public 36 public use airports in the state uh, programming and planning all their projects their projects from runway reconstructions to taxiway uh, rehabilitations to anything that you need to uh, upgrade or improve at the airport oh so, that's awesome thank you yes. you guys do give us a lot of support here so yes. Steve are you a pilot yes I am I'm a general aviation pilot started quite a while ago. Uh, How'd you get started? It's kind of interesting, just uh, Saturday morning sitting down there with my parents drawing airports uh, and drawing airplanes, more specifically airplanes. Saturday morning uh, and Saturday morning also back back in the day had Sky King. It was out of the blue of the western sky with, with Sky King and Penny. And oh, it just, that's it great. Just, so what do you do now for Mass DOT? What's your uh, okay. job description? Well, With that planning and programming department that I Participate. I mean, I'm the airport planner for the DOT. We also have aviation education outreach. So as part of our mission, as in addition to uh, improving the airports with their projects that they need to do, we have an educational outreach okay. aspect. And this is part of uh, the airport open house, airport fly-ins, and conferences that we go and participate in. All right. So Steve, uh, you know, I saw you recently at the Mass Airport Management Association conference yes. earlier this week back out here. So do you guys go to a lot of these events throughout the year? Uh, we have. We, uh, we probably attend maybe oh, 15 to 20 events uh, throughout the course of the season. Starts out maybe late May or early July, June and runs right through right up till now until October, September, October. And then they kind of taper off in the colder months. But Oh, that's fantastic. So I see that you have a little booth set up here oh, with some yes. brochures. Um, we also have mm -hmm. some flight simulators. So we what's do. the... Uh, What's the goal of the flight simulators at this the, event? The flight simulators is to actually to, to let the adults and children as well, mostly children, but a lot of the adults take advantage, to, to just uh, enjoy what it, you know, that simulation that they might experience in flying. And, and it's, a, it's a great tool that it's, it's similar to a video game, but it's actually a little more sophisticated. We have the Yoke, we have the Microsoft 10 there, and, and it's, it's just something you may not have at home. And it's, it's, it's a great way to introduce people to flying and to aviation. And that's excellent. I think that you guys do a great job. I really like the, the simulator. I know you were here last year at our fly-in. Yes. Brought the same simulator and had a, a great turnout. And I know we actually had people come back after the fly-in and say, hey, I saw the Mass DOT simulator. I thought okay. I'd give uh, flying a try. So you guys oh, do wonderful. a really good job wonderful. at uh, right. getting people in with that education outreach. Well, that's great. As, as part of our education outreach, we have another program. We have, uh, we have the International, the International Art Contest, which okay. we sponsor every year and it's presently open and this this year 2014 it's flying save lives flying saves saves lives and it's open for students from 6 to 17 and they can submit their drawings to us the competition is in January 
uh, the state winner is then forwarded on to Washington and where they can then compete at the national level. If they so go beyond that, they'll go on to the international level where the judging is held in Switzerland. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, just, just a year ago, we had an individual from Lexington, Louis Fong, and he not only won our state competition, national but international recognition. Wow. So he won the 2012 International Art Aviation Car Art Contest. Uh, also, we sponsored the Real World Design Challenge. That's a, quite a new, few notches up from art, but it's an engineering program okay. where you'll, you receive licenses to work with state-of-the-art engineering programs. You download it, you do it in a team environment is from 9 through 12 and those students then design or work on an aviation challenge and project sure and they they make that submission if they're successful in the state competition they'll go on to the national competition wow. so that aviation educational art contest is uh, a great uh, item as well as the engineering real world design challenge uh, just recently with the real world design challenge they've added a new feature that not the state challenge winner but the person that goes on to or the team that goes on to win the national competition, uh, each student will receive a Embry-Riddle scholarship of $50,000, which wow. spread over four, four years is, is pretty good. It's a, yeah, it's it sounds a, like you guys sponsor uh, quite a few different efforts to get people involved with aviation. We can hear a little airplane going by in the background yes, there. Uh, so wonderful sounds, sound. You know, I think you guys do a wonderful job supporting us here yes. at the Mansfield Airport. And, Last mm -hmm. week at the Mass Airport Management Association Conference, you know, you guys had a great presence there. Yes. Uh, brought a lot of information, a lot of the projects you're doing to help us improve and keep this access right. that we have to the airspace mm -hmm. system right here in, uh, in Mansfield. So, yeah. yes. you know, a lot of people don't know what goes on at the airport, that there are jobs that, that are here, there's opportunities right. here, uh, and there's, there's mm -hmm. activities for young people to come in and get involved with aviation. So I just wanted to yeah. say thank you for all that support and Absolutely. give people a little introduction yes. to what Mass DOT does to help the airports and help the general public in the state uh, yeah. you know, embrace the airport. So thank you very we, much. Uh, we're, we're happy to be here and uh, you know, happy flying to everybody. All right, Steve, thank, thank you for you. joining yes. us. And uh, that'll yeah, do it here from good. the Mass DOT table at the 2013 Mansfield Airport Flying. Thanks for joining us.